Now let's analyze the four policies. The first policy is to do nothing in the DG and the DD stage. Recall that DG means one machine is deteriorated while the second machine is good and DD means both machines are deteriorated. Now this is an important stage because uh, this is an important policy because we are going to actually derive a lot of these uh, expressions. Okay? So Xn is going to be the state of the system at the end of the nth day. Okay, so that is as usual, state of the system at the end of the nth day. Now Xn is going to be modeled as a discrete time Markov chain with state space S given by this. Remember these are the six states, both machines good, the first machine, uh, sorry, one machine is deteriorated, the other is good. We do not make a distinction which is deteriorated, which is good. Both machines are deteriorated one machine is good and the other machine is bad, one machine is bad and the other machine is deteriorated and both machines are bad. These are the six possible states and the transition probability matrix P is given by this. Now I typically write down the states in the same order GG, DG, DD, GB, DB and BB. In other words, both machines are good the first one machine is deteriorated, the other is good, both machines are deteriorated, one machine is good, the other machine is bad, one machine is deteriorated, the other machine is bad or both machines bad. I am going to next explain how I get some of these probabilities. Now if you look at this, uh, now this one, let us explain this one very briefly. So if you recall, the probability of going from good to good from one to the next observation is 0.85. So the probability of going both machines going from good to good, that means machine one stays good, machine two stays good, this and that, both events are independent. So it is 0.85 times 0.85 which is 0.85 squared, okay. Both machines are continue to remain good. Now the probability of going from good good to deteriorated good, that means one of the machines goes from good to deteriorated and the other machine stays good. So the machine that stays good stays good with probability 0.85. The machine that goes from good to deteriorated goes there with probability 0.1. But there are two ways that this could happen, right? So 2 choose 1, 0.1 to the 1, 0.85 to the 1. Let me repeat why I get this 2. You could think of it in the following way. The first machine stays the way it is, the second machine deteriorates or plus the first machine deteriorates, the second machine stays the way it is. So then you have 2 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.85. Then both machines could have toggled from good good to deteriorated deteriorated. So that means 0 0.1 squared, that is pretty straightforward. Again good good to good bad, that means the good, one of the good machines uh, goes off and becomes bad, the other good machine remains as good. Okay? But it could be either, so it is 2 times 0.85 good to good times 0 0.05 going from good to bad. Now then what is the probability of going from GG to DB? That means one machine goes from G to D, the other machine goes from G to B. So that is 0 0.1 times 0 0.05, 0 0.1 times 0 0.05 times 2 because there are 2 machines. So one could have gone that or the other. So it is 2 choose 1, 0.1 to the 1, 0 0.05 to the 1. Now BB to BB is both machine, I'm sorry, GG to BB is both machines going from good to bad, so 0 0.05 whole square. Now let's look at the second row, okay. Now I'm going to erase some of this because there are too many things marked out here and so that it gives me some space to say a few things and some ability to say stuff, okay. Now from DG, there is no way I can go to GG because a deteriorated machine will never go to good. Okay, so that is not possible. So that probability is 0. Another thing that could happen is both machines stay the way they are. Okay, so DD machine, D machine stays with D, that happens with probability 0.75 and then the G machine stays with G, so that happens with probability 0.85. Notice that they could not have flipped, the D could not have become G because the, uh, that could never happen. So that possibility is not there, okay. So only this is possible. Then from DG you can go to DD. So the D machine stays at D which is happens with probability 0 0.75 and the uh, uh, the good machine becomes deteriorated with 
probability 0 0.1. So, 0 0.75 times 0 0.1. Next, dg you can go to gb. The only way that could happen is if the good machine remained good with probability 0 0.85 and the deteriorated machine became bad with probability 0 0.25. Now, dg to db is interesting. dg to db requires some explanation. This one of thing, two things could have happened. Either the deteriorated machine continued to be deteriorated and the good machine became bad. So, that is one option. So, that happens with probability 0 0.75 multiplied by 0 0.05 or the deteriorated machine became bad and the good machine became deteriorated. That could also happen, either this or that. So, deteriorated to bad is 0 0.25, which is this, and good to deteriorated is 0 0.1, which is this guy. So, that is why you have two terms that add to add up against each other. Okay. Finally, dg to bb, that means both machines become bad. So, that happens with probability 0 0.05 times 0 0.25, which is this. Notice that the rows add to 1. If it is not obvious, please go ahead and do the calculation and see that the rows do indeed add to 1. Now, the next row and this is the last uh, detailed row. The next row is the last row. So, when you are in state DD, when you are in state DD, uh, you could never go to GG because you can never go from D to G and from D if, because you are doing nothing. Remember, you are doing nothing. So, you are not fixing anything and from D D you cannot go to D G all right and uh, from D D you can stay in D D which happens with probability 0 0.75 squared because the D machine stays in D, the other D stays in the other D. So, it is 0 0.75 you cannot go to G B because you cannot go from D to G if you do nothing all right. Now, uh, the only uh, thing that could happen is from DD you can go to DB or from DD you can go to BB. DD to BB is 0.25 square because both machines flip to being bad. On the other hand, one machine flips, the other remains the same. It could happen in two ways. Therefore, it is 0.75 times 0.25. Now, these three probabilities are one because if you are in state GB, you are guaranteed to call the repair person and you are surely going to state GG. If you are in DB, you will call the repair person and go to GG. If you are in BB, you will call the repair person and next day you will be in GG. So, you have this P matrix that we have here. Now, I can take the P matrix and solve for pi values using the same technique we saw before pi equals pi P, pi equals pi P and uh, sigma pi I equals 1. I use the same method and I can come up with these probabilities. So, if you use your octave and did your calculations, this will be what you get. Now, these are the costs that are important to consider. So, in states D, in states GG, if you did nothing, in everywhere you are doing nothing. Okay. So, when you do nothing, I am going to go back a little bit and show you the costs in the previous picture here. If you did nothing, your cost should be this 0, 10, 20. Okay, and you would repair in these three states 55, 65, 70, 0, 10, 20. So, this is the states for DG and DD 0, 10, 20, 55, 65, 70, 0, 10, 20, 55, 65, 70 multiplied by 1000 rupees because uh, these uh, numbers are not just in 10 rupees and 20 rupees, but it is 10,000, 20,000. Okay. So, the long run average cost per day is 12,455 rupees. So, that is the cost that the company incurs per day under policy 1 on average in the long run. Now, let us see what happens in policy 2 where I would tinker all the time. So, every time I am in any state I would tinker. Okay. Now, the first column remains exactly the same as before DD, GB, DB and BB. Likewise, GG, DG, DD, GB, DB and BB. Now, the first row does not change because if in state GG, you would typically do nothing. right? So, therefore, whatever we had before here in the first row continues to hold. However, in these two states, we have now decided to tinker. Right, tinker and DG, tinker and DD. Okay, DG. I'm sorry, I, I 
pick the wrong one, DG and tinker in DD. So therefore, in these two, you will always tinker. So you, next day, you will always be in GG state. Okay, you will tinker and go to GG, tinker and go to GG. However, here, you will always call the repair person. So therefore, naturally, like before, like we had in policy one, you are always going to go to state GG. Now, if you did the calculations, now this is a completely different P matrix, and this one will calculate to give you this. And now remember, the costs are different. Now, if you go back to this graph, I'm sorry, this table, now we're looking at not doing these two. Instead, we're going to do these two because we're going to do nothing. I'm sorry, we're going to tinker. I mean, we do nothing was last time. So 0, 25, 40, 55, 65, 70. Right? 0, 25, 40. 55, 65, 70. This is policy 2 and the long run average cost is 7,945 rupees. Now let's look at policy 3 where you do nothing in DG and you tinker in DD. Okay, you do nothing in DG and you tinker in DD. Okay, so even if one machine is good, you won't bother with it, but if both machines are uh, deteriorated, you would go ahead and tinker. Okay? Now, let us see what happens to the cost. Now, it turns out that the uh, first two rows are the same as before because if you are going to do nothing in a particular state, then that P matrix would be similar to the do nothing P matrix and where you would tinker, that would look something like the tinker state. So, let me just rewrite this and I will explain in a second. DD, GB, DB. Now remember to always put down these states in the same order. So in the first two rows where your state is GG and DG, you do nothing. Okay, right? Do nothing in DG. Of course, GG always do nothing. So you would just write down the first two rows of this guy, right? 0 0.85 and so on, and 0 0.85, 0 0.75 and so on. So you'll write exactly that, and the others are same as before. And you do pi equals pi p and you solve for your pi's, you get this as the value. And now your costs are so. Okay, so now what happens here is you will basically do nothing in DG, but you will tinker in DD. So 0, 10, 40, 55, 65, 70. So you do 0, 10, 40, 55, 65, 70. You did your calculations, you get 1, 1, 3, 3, 3. So this one is still better than do nothing everywhere, but it's worse than tinker. Now let's look at policy number four. Now this one is do nothing in DD and tinker in DG. This is somewhat, somewhat counterintuitive because this is saying that when I'm in a worse state, I do nothing. But when I'm in a slightly better state, one machine is good and the other machine is uh, deteriorated, we will tinker, but if both are deteriorated, we do nothing. It seems a little bit counterintuitive. You would think that, well, you, you know, some type of monotonicity, right? That's that's missing here. Let's see what happens here. Here again, you would go GG, DG, DD, GB, DB, and BB. From here, you would go to the same possible states written out in the uh, state space: DD, GB. DB and BB. Now this time you would do nothing in this state and this state. So these two states we write exactly the same as what we had in the do nothing case. So this will be the first and the third that get repeated. The second will be the same as the case where we had tinker in both and therefore you get the one state here. You get this one because of tinkering and these ones are because of repair. Now these become the probabilities and the costs, if you look at that, if you look at the cost, now what happens is instead of this, you would get this cost and this cost because you would do nothing in DD, but you would tinker in DG. If you did that, your cost would be 0, 20, 25, 55, 65, 70. Okay? 0, 25, 20, 55, 65, 70. See, I'm sorry, it should be 25, 20 and not 20, 25 because the order in which we have these is if you look at it, this is DG. So DG corresponds to 25 and DD corresponds to 20. So we have to be a little bit careful. DG corresponds to 25 and DD corresponds to 20. So I have to write it in this order. So that's very important. If you did that, look at the cost. It's pretty low. Still not lower than policy 2, which is to tinker in both states, but it's lower than this and it's lower than do nothing. Okay? 
So, that is an interesting result. So, now I want to make some closing comments about Markov decision processes. I do want to say that the optimal policy is policy number 2 and this is to tinker in both DD and DG states. A close second is this unintuitive or counterintuitive policy number 4 where you would tinker in a state like DG, but you would do nothing in DD. Okay? So, do nothing in DD sounds a little counterintuitive. That is a close second policy, something that we did not expect. Um, and if you want to look at this, there are some interesting issues to consider as closing comments. We only had four simple policies to compare. We could easily do that by enumerating the state space and action space and so on. Now, there are many things that could happen. The state space could explode. The action space could become really large. You would need some significant machinery, just like what we saw in stochastic programming. You would need things like linear programming. You would need methods like value iteration, policy iteration. So, there is going to be a bunch of machinery that you would need, which is a little bit beyond the scope of this course. All of them and all the extensions that I am going to talk about now will use what is called a stochastic dynamic programming formulation. And for that, you would typically write down what is known as the Bellman equation. So, this is a fairly standard thing that one does. Now, one of the downsides is that the dynamic programming formulation, the state space explode. That is because you really have to consider all the various possible states that you can be in. And the number of states start to explode, it gets a little bit tricky. Now, notice that the policy that we saw here is again stationary and deterministic. That means, I do not change my policy based on the time of the day or the, uh, or the time of the year, if you will. And they are also deterministic. In this state, you would tinker. In this state, you would do nothing. That type of a deterministic policy, it is not like you flip a coin. Both are fairly standard in these types of infinite horizon, time homogeneous, average cost problems. Okay? Now, one could also derive other results like monotonicity. And uh, if you have monotonicity, the search for optimal solution becomes a lot easier. Okay? Uh, that is one of the nice features. So, many times in Markov decision process, we are not really computing the optimal solution, but we are looking for a structure. And once you get the structure, like we did today. So, in this example, we were only enumerating policies. In the other example, little s, big s, you would try and solve an optimization problem to pick the right little s and the right big s. You want to just look for all the possible policies. Okay? Now, you could also look at uh, the discounted cost case. We only looked at the average cost case. You could take a discounted cost. That means the value of money right now is different from what it would be several years from down the line, and you can look at a discounted cost. And then another problem that is very often studied is a finite horizon case. And if you have finite horizon, you might as well have non stationary processes where there is a time varying behavior. A lot of people analyze this. For example, people who study how what should be price a ticket for the airlines. This is typically solved using these types of techniques. And we could also extend a lot of this to continuous time Markov chains. We only looked at discrete time Markov chains. These are what is called SMDP, semi Markov decision processes. Not only can the time be continuous, the states can also be continuous. And in that case, you write down what is called the HJB equation, Hamilton, Jacobi, Bellman, and go ahead and try to solve this problem. So, there are many different ways to extend this. This is a well studied, extremely rich in the literature. This is something that one could do. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of papers and books written about this topic. So, MDP, Markov decision process, is a fascinating area, is essentially in the field of feedback control. And uh, there are many, many examples of this, uh, these types of using these types of techniques, especially in solving problems in decision making under uncertainty. This uh, brings us to the end of the course. I certainly enjoyed presenting this to you all. I hope you had a fun time listening to this. And I look forward to uh, having you in future courses. Thank you.